All right, today we're going to talk about vermicomposting, which basically just means using worms to help us break down our food scraps into a really nice soil uh, called worm castings. So here at the Urban Naturalist, we do sell red wigglers. Red wigglers are a good variety because they work well in containers. Not all worms, like the worms that you'll find when you're digging around in your garden, will necessarily survive in a container. So let's take a look in one of my worm bins. Now you can get a, a nice worm bin online or you can just make one. This one is made from a, uh, just a storage container. So, and this is one I made pretty recently. So let's see if we can find some of these worms in here. These worms are, are really useful for helping you break down your food scraps. They're also kind of a sterilizer. Worms don't actually eat the food, they eat all the microbial activity on the food. So once a worm is finished with it, it's pretty clean. It's about as clean as it gets in nature, soil-wise. So here's one right here. And every worm is both a male and a female. So they just need to find one other worm in order to mate. And this one is pregnant. That's what this little bump is in the middle. So this lets me know that this guy's going to lay an egg. And a worm can lay an egg every, every few days, but the egg takes about three months for it to hatch. So it, being a worm farmer is a pretty patient process. So I started out with a few worms and I just slowly grew them over time. And um, they're, they're really easy to, uh, to manage. You can either feed them every day or you can not feed them for several days and they're still pretty happy. So they can continue to live on just the bacteria and, and microbial activity that can happen inside this bin and they'll continue to to break down and, and make all of these food scraps into a really nice texture. I've also got some rabbit manure in there that's what you also see in and that helps to just kind of bump up the population pretty fast. They, they do really well on that. So I didn't put a whole lot into this bin because the idea is to grow out this population so I want to leave some room for more of them to show up and there they are. It's like a, a worm party right there. There we go. They don't like light very much so they move as soon as we dig. Like I said this is a pretty fresh uh, bin so how about I show you one that's been at it for a little longer and we'll see more castings. Let's see. Let's take a look at this one right next to you. This one is more aged. Yeah, see this is more worm castings right here. All right, so we haven't added a, a lot of food to this one. It's been sitting here for a while and this just gives you an idea. It's got a really, really nice texture. You know, water will easily move through these worm castings. And this one is really loaded with worms and also some eggs. This is a good addition to any aspect of your gardening. Worm castings are probably one of the best materials that you could use in gardening. They're high in nutrients and they're typically very sterile when it comes to plant pathogens or anything bad. So <clears throat> red wigglers are used a lot throughout the organic industry for that reason. They're probably the most popular uh, organism for converting trash into really high-end organic soil. They also limit how much we have to turn the material because the worms are doing all the tilling for us. So worms have been turning soil for millions of years and they're really really good at it. So it's it's really hard to rival the texture of a of a healthy garden with a lot of worms. And right here this is one of the reasons we get a lot of questions about this guy right here. This grub right here, uh, we have a lot of people asking about this taking over the compost pile. And this is a black soldier fly larva. These in Louisiana in zone 9, these will occur between April and October. And maybe even more than that if we have a, a, you know, a fairly warm year. So these guys, it's really hard to keep them out of a compost situation. You, one way is to, to keep it enclosed, kind of a, a sealed container, or possibly even indoors or in a shed, and that, that could help exclude them. But it's really hard to keep this guy out. So 
we have another facility where we utilize this organism and we actually grow this guy out in the warmer months and then we switch over to more uh, feeding to the red wigglers in the cooler months. So, but we use this guy as a fishing bait, a reptile feed, and we also feed chickens with him. So it's a way to, to sort of salvage a lot of the calories that we pick up from our compost. But this is just part of composting and these along with roaches, earwigs, are going to be common other insects that you see in your composting and it's not a bad thing. They only eat decomposing material so you don't have to worry about them eating on a tomato plant when you move the soil into your, your garden. Another nice thing about having a lid is that you don't have to worry about it getting too wet. If your worm bin gets too saturated, your worms will die. So that's another, in all of these open top worm bins, we have lots of tiny holes drilled in the bottom of them. And we want the smallest holes possible so that we don't encourage them to crawl right into the soil. So the red wigglers diet, um, there's no meat, no dairy, and no citrus when you're feeding your red wigglers. The meat would attract other pests and you don't really want to attract and it's also going to smell a lot. The dairy would also contribute to a really bad smell. And the citrus because it's going to acidify the whole bin and it'll probably kill a lot. Of, if you introduce a lot, a lot of citrus, a couple of orange peels is okay. But if you introduce too much uh, citrus at one time, you could acidify the bin and you could wipe them out completely. So, so we want to refrain from doing that. So we don't, we don't sell castings, but we do sell uh, what we call a start. It's a scoop from a really active worm bin. You'll get worms, you'll get eggs, and castings. And they're all you know, mixed in together, so you can introduce that into your worm bin and start your own. And those are $10. So you can pick those up anytime at the Urban Naturalist during business hours. And we carry those year-round. That's uh, one of our most popular products.